You will all agree that Kane enjoyed a season 1 revenge on Lorenzo when he set him up to be beaten by the prison guards. What's up power fans on YouTube, it's your boy Nino and I'm back with another power video, episode 303 of book 2 Ghost. Now in this video I'll be talking about how Whitman is acting like Greg Knox and how he just established a clue to Monet about Zeke's death. The Tahara family, especially Diana, and how she successfully moved the weight on Stansfield, who is likely to die first among these three pictures and other happenings in episode 3. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you've already subscribed, thanks for the support. Now let's get straight into the topic. Now in my last video, I stated that Kane is going to misuse his power over over Lorenzo and the family will start to notice the sudden change with Lorenzo when it comes to decision making. Now Drew and Diana figured out something isn't right about Lorenzo and his actions are nothing like him. Now with Lorenzo, what's the worst that can happen to him? The bottom line is for him to be killed. Now the way Kane is moving with affairs, I have a feeling Lorenzo might confess to Monet himself about Zeke. I think he might not be able to contain the treatment from Kane at some point. After all, if he will die, it will eventually happen because the way Kane is moving, Drew might talk to Diana and they will both figure out something isn't right about their father. Diana will also not understand why her father of all people is asking her to sell now. Besides, it takes only Monet knowing the secrets for Kane's power on Lorenzo to be over. Now, talking about Monet, Whitman just gave Monet clues on why Zeke was killed but she was too emotional to catch the clue. Whitman said he assumed Zeke caught a bullet that was meant for Dante's spear. A case of mistaken identity. Zeke, he caught a bullet meant for Dante Spears. Case of mistaken identity. But Monet should have caught this, but obviously her emotion didn't allow that to sink in. Because who could be targeting Dante Spear and mistakenly shoot Zeke in the process? She should know that the idea of taking Mecca out was an internal discussion, so whoever kills Zeke is from the family. There is only one person aside here who wants Dante dead and it won't be Tariq because Tariq was with Monet at the penthouse before Zeke was killed. Now moving on, question of the day is, they have Diana on King, Mr. and Mrs. Weston on Braden, Grandma on Tariq. Question is, what do they have on Afi? Well, I can say nothing because this wasn't about her in the first place. Norma has three people to deal with, Tariq, Kane, and Braden. If Drew had stayed that evening before Norma raided the penthouse, I'm sure Drew would have been part. So clearly, no need to push any button on Ify. Besides, we still don't know much about Ify yet. But then, it would have been a great opportunity for the writer to introduce someone in Ify's life though. But like I said, Norma is dealing with Tariq, Braden, and Kane. And I think we all agree that if Tariq didn't send his little sister to her mother, she would have been the one they will have on Tariq now. Now, if they are going to kill these people, it might not be possible with Diana or Braden's parents any longer. The one they will start with is Tariq's grandmother, even though he said she will be the last they will kill. I'll tell you why. Thanks to Lorenzo, Diana is now moving Norma's weight. So we can assume that she's part of moving the product. So if she's taken out because they are not meeting their KPIs, then they will still not be able since they will be shot with one person in terms of labor. Now with Braden's parents, if anything happens to either of them now, it will bring a whole lot of attention to the Westerns and since that is where Braden and Tariq are moving their weight, they don't need the car spinning around the company with dogs and staffs over a murder. Because if things get hot around the Westerns all of a sudden, it will be bad for their business. So now who can be touched first without hitting back on the business? Tariq's grandmother. If Norma wants to kill one of these people to teach Tariq and his crew some lessons to speed up on moving her weight, grandma can be the first point to start from. After all, it won't mess up the business or slow sales. So let me know what you also think in the comment section about this theory. Now, moving on to Theo Rollins. Well, we all know this isn't Redman. I feel this was done on purpose. If you pay close attention to the trailer where Sax was ambushed, it is this same guy posing at Theo that held gun to his head. Now, the question I want to ask is, will Sax expose his old office? Does he have any evidence he took along with him to defend this case? Or will Sax be playing both Jenny and Davis at the same time? I personally think Sax will help Theo out though. But if you study one thing about Sax, most of the times, if he finds himself in a tight corner or in a dilemma, he says the word fuck in a frustration way like this.
So let me know what you think about Sachs and Davis' case with regards to Theo. Now, let's talk about Tariq and Efe. Tariq's conversation with Efe is a little uncomfortable for me. I don't know about you, but just for a second, imagine Efe is wearing a wa and they were having this conversation. Do you see how Tariq has just implicated his mother as the queen pin and ghost as innocent? I think currently Tariq is talking too much. He said he's smarter and better than ghost, but it looks as though he's all that in the opposite direction because ghost will not say everything to a woman even if he loves her that much. But let me know what you think about our boy Tariq and his conversation with Efe. Now, talking about Efe, I feel like Efe might tell Kane that Braden couldn't do Lauren, but she did. So maybe he should stop putting Braden to some tax before he messes things up. Now, Diana felt played by Efe and this might turn out ugly for Efe. I have a feeling Diana is going to shut Efe's pipeline at Stansfield. Now, Diana knows this spot where they used to hide the drugs. Efe doesn't know she does. Now, Diana met her coming from the rooftop and with the cost perfect now selling on campus, Diana has just confirmed Efe is dealing drugs on campus. Now, Diana knows that Lorenzo will never allow her to sell. So for him to come to her with bag of drugs, it means that's some SOS she must do for Papi. Now, if I'm Diana, the best way I can move the weight even through the candy shop is by cutting off Ife's pipeline on campus. Either that or she joins Ife to help her move her father's assigned products. But should Diana wants to play dirty by cutting off Ife's pipeline, how would she do that? If I'm Diana, I'll fix a dummy camera at the rooftop to scare Ife from using the place. This will also stop her people from coming to do pickups and drops. If this happens this way, Diana gets to move her father's product even there and possibly through the candy shop. Other than that, Diana will be seen working with Ife to move the products as Stansfields together. But then again, this spot will eventually be compromised soon because of the camera that has been spotted here in the trailer. And the brick wall with the environment looks like the exact place they have been hiding the drugs. And if you want to consider the title of this episode, Braden's sister will also play some role for Diana, you know, human capital. Now, let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, let's talk about Tate. Tate just gave Blanca and Jenny clues that Tariq and Braden could be selling drugs at Western Holdings. Yeah, well, he came to me for an internship. I turned him away. Like, he took an internship elsewhere. Western Holdings? Yeah, but shouldn't be anything illegal, of course, because he's just working with an old friend of his. Braden Weston? The kid who actually confessed to being the drug dealer, right? Remember when Sachs and Blanca were working together to get a search warrant to search Ghost's apartment, especially for Terry Silver's murder, and Tate confirmed to their story about Ghost simply because it could give him chance to become the right candidate? Now, it's a similar thing he has done here with Tariq again. Blanca knows him to be shady and dirty, that's why she even called him Bendejo. And if you notice one thing about Tate, he is quick to give up and protect his campaign if he feels threatened. He will give every clue to make his ambition easily achievable. So now Blanca has every reason to think that Tariq is moving weight at Western Holdings. Let me know what you also think about this in the comment section. Now last but not least, let me talk about Braden real quick. I think Braden is starting to feel like he owes Tariq his life after saving him from the connect he was asked to kill. This kind of feeling is the beginning of maximum betrayal because Tariq will constantly do things to show Braden that he loves him as a brother and will not want to see him hurt. But Braden, on the other hand, will feel more guilty because of what he and Ife did to Lauren. So guilty conscience will become a pressure point for Braden, and he will end up confessing to Tariq about Lauren. Now, finally, let's talk about Drew. Now, Drew has been distracted throughout this episode with his phone and the dating app. Even Kane noticed he was on his phone all this while. One can say since Everett broke up with him, he's been looking for a similar replacement. After his first kick with this guy, he went looking at Everett's post which suggests that he's talking him in a way. Then he got notification from his dating app of a picture from a potential match. This potential match has a tattoo of card around his wrist. Now fast forward, Drew met this person but the person doesn't know that it was Drew because they haven't exchanged facial pictures yet. Now when the Tahares were meeting up with Uncle Frank's boys, the one that seemed to be their leader is the same guy who sent pictures to Drew in the beginning. When he was telling Drew he has a trainer after Drew said he changed in size, he kind of scratched his head and in doing so, the tattoo showed. So if you notice, Drew saw and remembered that this is the guy he is chatting with. Now generally, what does this mean? It means Uncle Frank also had a son like Drew. But then what does this mean to Drew? Will he proceed with this move? Do you think he will back out now that he has seen the person behind the picture? 
Well, we know that mixing business with pleasure has its own consequences. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share. Most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.